The Cavalcade of America. America. America means skyscrapers and haylofts, the crack of a pioneer's flintlock, and the sound of the riveter's machine, the outline of a church steeple against the midnight sky. America is your story. America is you and everyone you know. Tonight's play is called Reveille and stars the dean of the American Theater, Walter Hamden, as George Washington. Our story begins far from these shores. The time is September in the year 1777, and the place, the European home of Dr. Benjamin Franklin, near Paris. A fateful conversation between Dr. Franklin and a mysterious friend draws toward a close. They're talking in French, of course, but perhaps we may translate. Time, sir, is of the essence. Arrangements have been made for you to sail from Marseille. On Saturday, you will board the French frigate Lerle of 24 guns. Lerle, the happy one. The fortunate name, Dr. Franklin. Yes, and a good omen, I hope. By the way, you are aware that the aid being given the American colonies by the French court in this matter is highly secret. Entirely secret. Of course, Dr. Franklin. I do not talk. Since 14, I'm a soldier. The frigate will be disguised as a merchantman under the name Le Flamand. Yeah? You will take ship as one Mr. Frank, bearing dispatches for the governor of Martinique. Yeah, yeah? But you will debark at Portsmouth in New Hampshire with the help of God. What do you with headquarters? Huck, no. Is there ever anything new at Valley Port? Oh, yeah. You were going to keep your ears open, Sarge. Didn't you hear anything? Those things I heard. Listening as I was to the big brass gorgets and their grand powwow. Yes, what did you hear? One? General Washington has wrote a letter to the gentlemen of Congress that taken their ease back in York in front of a fire. Yeah. Gents, he says... We must have instant aid, or else we must either starve or disband. Yeah, 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 and the general, yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless him, has heard back. What? What did he say? The gentlemen of the Congress are sending us... Food? Gun? Ammunition? Food? Oh, no, 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 lad. They're sending a committee. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the time. A committee to investigate and report back and so on and so on. Yeah. Point two, the boy made a speech. Lafayette. The boy himself. Gentlemen, he says, what this army needs is to be an army. Right now, he says, we're not an army at all. We're a mere rabble. Mere rabble. Oh, hold on now, hold on. He was right complimentary. No ordinary rabble, he says, could have held out like us. But we need somebody to tell us what to do and how to do it and why to do it. Did he have any notions about what we're going to eat while we're doing it? Well, no. Oh. No, that point wasn't mentioned. His lordship, the quartermaster general, Mr. Mifflin, he wasn't there. Ah, he's in York by the fire, chomping on a side of beef. That does it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going home. Where all the pigs have four legs and turn into pork overnight. Oh, yeah. so oh, Unbolt the door, Corporal. Same shot. The Corporal closed the door. Then this is Colonel Alexander Hamilton, General Washington's aide, on a tour of inspection. Another. Yeah. Now, Colonel, this is what's left of my regiment, the 4th New York, as you know. Yes. What was your strength when we went into winter quarters here, Captain? Ninety men. And what is it now? Now, this morning, sir, there were 30 of us left. What are those men doing in their bunks, Captain, at this hour in the evening? Well, we're short of clothing, sir. Some of us have no britches, so we have to share about. The naked ones lie in the bunk. I see. Uh, let's have a look at this boy. Well, he sleeps pretty soundly. Lift the blanket, Captain. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, it's... Oh, yes, it's Wilson from Newburgh. 
He was in a bad way this morning. The lungs, you know, and the froth. He's not asleep, sir. He's dead. Washington, and gentlemen of the staff, I conclude my report of conditions here. Thank you, Colonel Hamilton. Gentlemen, you all realize the seriousness of our situation. We have 10,000, heaven knows how many more, how many less, some 10,000 troops left. The sick we can count easily, gentlemen, more than a fifth of our body. The point I wish to make to General Conway is that we have to win a war with those troops. Yet, in the European sense, they don't constitute an army at all. Despair, lack of discipline, desertion, disorganization. These are the roots of our difficulties. May I suggest, sir, that the root of our difficulty lies in the senseless, stupid, and utterly destructive attitude of the Congress. Good heavens, sir, even if we win, are we to be ruled by a coterie of timid, greedy, dolts and asses? If we win, and we shall win, we'll be ruled by the representatives of the people. That's what we're fighting for. And we can hardly expect uh, the people's representatives to be inspired to judges, saints, or philosophers. No. Oh, surely this is no time or place for political theorizing. Ours is a practical problem. It has been stated most clearly by Lafayette. Well, thank you, sir. I had feared being so young to raise my voice. All voices are need now. My dear young friend, the problem you pose to us is not a new one in our eyes. It has long been my hope that we might find someone, someone, who could bring together our divergent ideas of discipline into one body of military law. And we propose to the Congress that an Inspector General be appointed. Congress again. Talk, talk, talk. How long must this go on? Possibly until you learn patience, Hamilton, and common charity. Uh, <coughs> yes, sir, General uh, Since we are so clearly getting nowhere, whatever, sir, may I suggest we adjourn? I, for one, have need of sleep. General Wilkinson here. <laughs> he is asleep. Mm, it would be a shame to wake him. Well, I too am weary of debate. Gentlemen, we stand adjourned. Oh, sleep well, General Conway. <laughs> a waste of time, Wilkinson. These eternal councils. And how characteristic of our so democratic commander. Our oh, uh, commander at the moment, come on. Yes, for the moment, yes. <laughs> Here's my humble abode, Wilkinson. Come in with me. Yes, I have something to show you. What a heavenly aroma. Mm. What is it? Guinea hen. Well roasted. Prime. <laughs> and a quart of rain is great to wash it down. <laughs> and brandy to come. Nice, my friend. <laughs> but here at Valley Forge, how do you mean? Ah, I have friends in the Congress at York, General Wilkinson. Good friends, well placed. Two of them on the board of war. Uh, help yourself to the food, oh, General. Yes, thank As you. As they can to General Gates, you must know how these things are done. Eh? Oh, well, 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 come, come, well. Wilkinson. We can understand each other. General Gates, your superior, wishes to supplant General Washington as Commander-in-Chief. He has an important body of support in Congress. Your friends at York are my friends. We can do business, Wilkinson. Uh, oh, how? In this manner, Washington has placed himself in an utterly untenable position. Someone is needed to create an army out of his disorganized mob at Valley Forge. So he has recommended to the Board of War that an Inspector General be appointed. Uh, more guinea hen? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know who that Inspector General will be, Wilkinson? Uh, no. Who? Oh, me, General. Me. It's all arranged. I'm to report directly to the Board of War, not to General Washington. Do you understand? Could I? Oh, a little bit. Yes, little certainly. Of course. Yes. <laughs> uh, now. Now. To us, General Wilkinson, to us. And to our future Commander-in-Chief, General Horatio Gates. Hamilton, I've just 
received word from Congress that the Board of War has at last acted on my recommendation. They have appointed an Inspector General. They've appointed Conway. Conway? Well, that charlatan? What are we to do, sir? There's nothing we can do. He's not to be under my command. He'll report, so the Board instructs me, directly to the Congress. Oh, well, I'll receive him with the courtesy due his new office. Sir, if only you were to take my advice and march on York and seize power yourself, I know the men would follow you. Hamilton, I have forbidden you to mention that vanity again. Perhaps my career is nearing its close. Well, it may end in defeat, but never in treason. But, sir, we cannot go on. We'll not discuss the matter, Colonel. I was about to suggest, sir, that our fortunes can descend no lower. Come in. Yes? Colonel Lawrence. A message, sir, from one of Dr. Franklin's New England agents. Let me see it, Lawrence. Yes, sir. Mr. Frank has departed from Boston with messages for the governor of Martinique. At last! It's von Steuben. Is that good news, sir? It may be the answer to our prayer. Dr. Franklin has won an illustrious recruit to our cause. Mr. Frank is the Baron Frederick von Steuben. Another foreigner, sir? No, not just another foreigner, Lawrence. If Dr. Franklin is right and I've never known him to be wrong, von Steuben is a superb drill master. He's the foremost soldier in Europe. You are listening to The Cavalcade of America, starring Walter Hamden as George Washington. Washington at Valley Forge, where a shivering army suffers in the snow. Desertions mount daily with the continued failure of supply. And over the commander himself hangs the threat of the infamous Conway Gates Cabal. At last, Washington takes steps against the conspiracy. Colonel Lawrence? Yes, sir. Prepare a letter to General Conway. Listen to this, Hamilton. Yes, sir. You ready, Lawrence? Yes, sir. All ready. General Conway, a letter I received last night contained the following paragraph. Quote. In a dispatch from General Conway to General Gates, Conway wrote, Heaven has determined to save your country, General Gates, else a weak commander-in-chief would have ruined it long since. End of quotation. Sign the letter. I remain your humble servant, George Washington. That is all, sir? That's all. Well, General, how did you learn of Conway's letter to Gates? Wilkinson. And his cups, as usual, babbled it out in the hearing of one of my few friends at Gates' headquarters. But Conway will tell Gates at once, and Gates will think that... Yes, if I know Gates, he'll write to me, denying he ever received such a letter from Conway. He'll write to Congress, too, complaining that I libeled Conway. Such a, such a hubbub will be raised that the whole plot must come into the open at last. And in the open, they'll appear for what they are, subverters of our cause. An arrant fool to boot. <laughs> I see, sir. The letter is a slow fuse, leading to a barrel of gunpowder at York. Mm, I hope so. I hope so. Oh, uh, Colonel, I trust arrangements have been made to receive Baron von Steuben. Yes, sir. He will be met on the York Road by a headquarters company under Captain Walker and escorted here with every honor. When he comes, I'll ride out to meet him myself. <laughs> General Washington, may I present the Baron Frederick William von Steuben. Welcome, my dear Baron. General Washington. We've all looked, of, all of us looked forward to your arrival. General, my, my English is not so good, but I have learned a speech to say to you. Uh, so I forget. Uh, well, I'm very happy. Many of our officers are able to converse in French, Baron. 
And uh, Captain Walker here is accomplished in German as well. Ach, mon ami Walter, we have schon gesprochen. We werden uns gut verstehen. Let's pass. Eh, oui. To allen Seiten kennen Sie sicher sein. Uh, Captain Walker, in my letter to the Baron, I explained our pitiful condition here. At your earliest opportunity, you will explain to him those things which cannot be said in letters. Yes, sir. Tell him we have many officers skilled in European methods of war, but they can't be spared from the line or from staff duties or the drill ground. Our enemy has forced us in these campaigns to fight pitched battles on the European order and on a European scale, and we've lost those battles for lack of unified training, for lack of system, for lack of drill. To instill system will be the Baron's work. Well, I think perhaps the Baron understands English better than he speaks it, General Washington. Oh, yeah. Uh, General, when, uh, if you but knew how my heart rejoiced, how happy I am to do again the work of a soldier. Uh, Baron, you bring us new hope. <laughs> I tell you, Mistress Green, the likes of this man von Steuben has not been seen before on our side of the ocean. He's a combination of, uh, of Don Quixote, Jolly Father Christmas, and, and uh, Satan himself all rolled into one with seven league boots. Oh, well, he's so handsome, too. I do declare, on horseback, he looks like the very god of war. The captain, my husband, tells me the men are laughing at your Baron von Steuben, just as we are now. And is it not good to hear laughter again at Valley Forge, Mistress Green? They began by laughing at him. In a day's time, they were laughing with him. All day, he labors at the drill ground, pushing and pounding each squad into shape as if he were a, a young lieutenant eager for promotion. And each night, he spends writing out a new chapter in his manual of war. And uh, I, for four, stay up to make a fair copy in English. Then, six men work until dawn, making more copies for the brigade commanders. At 3 a.m., 3 a.m., mind you, the Baron is up again. No. He smokes a pipe while his valet dresses his hair. He has one cup of coffee, and at sunrise, he's drilling his beloved model company again. One, two, three, cat, nine, five, dry, cheer. And I perforce him out there with him, translating all three languages at once. Oh, poor Captain Walker. You must be worn out, quite worn out. On the contrary, Mistress Green, I've never felt better in my life. Since your husband succeeded the wretched Mifflin as quartermaster, I've acquired a warm coat to my back and reasonable rations to warm my innards. And I have work to do. Good work. Captain, we simply must meet this paragon of yours. You shall. And when he meets you, Miss Mead, I know what he'll say. And what will he say, Captain? I can hear him now. Wunderschön. Wunderschön. <laughs> Ach, Liebchen, komm, vous êtes belle. How you are, um, épouvantablement... <laughs> and then Prince says to me, he says, Sergeant Jenkins, you know what is this? A bayonet, says I. What is for, Sergeant, says he? To roast pig meat on the end of, says I. When we got pig meat, which we ain't, Doom cop, he says. Eat his horse sticking lobster backs in the belly. I show you. And he grabs my musket and starts dancing around and stabbing at the air like a like a great Dutch windmill. <laughs> Uh, the next time we have a committee from Congress poking around, and I hear tell there's another one on the way, I'll tell them, gents, I'll say, old Dutch Fritz is the best thing that's happened to this army since I stole the britches off a Tory farmer. <laughs>
There, gentlemen of the Congress, there you behold an army. When you were last with us, you saw a pitiful rabble. I arranged this review in your honor, gentlemen, so that you might see with your own eyes what has happened. It is miraculous, General Washington. Simply miraculous. No, no, sir. It's the result of the genius and hard work of Baron von Steuben, who came to us as a volunteer without pay. You know, of course, that Inspector General Conway has tendered us his resignation. I do. And if I may, I'd like to nominate as his successor, Frederick William von Steuben. the staff, little did I think I'd live to see the day when it would be possible to serve a banquet at Valley Forge. But General Green has outdone himself with the farmers in the hinterland, and, gentlemen, the occasion is worthy of his efforts. I have news for you, splendid news. Louis the Sixteenth, King of France, has declared a state of war between his country and Britain. Oh. <laughs> General, friends, this, this, you must know, is the happiest moment of my life. Uh, may I propose a toast to the people of my country, to France. To France. Yeah. France. And I have further news, hardly less important and hardly less gratifying to me. Baron von Steuben. Yes, sir. Baron. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for the work you have accomplished here. In a few short weeks, you've performed a feat, sir, without parallel in the history of arms. You've surmounted obstacles beyond number. You've turned a sick, despondent mob into a spirited army of disciplined soldiers. And you've taught us how to laugh again. <laughs> now my news is this. The Continental Congress has confirmed your appointment, Baron, as Inspector General in the Army of the United States. Gentlemen, another toast to General von Steuben, the architect of our future victory. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, my uh, English is not so good, <laughs> but it is better, no? <laughs> Yes, yes, I have teached, I have learned. I have learned much, more than what I teach. From these men, these tranquillas, these ones without bridges, I have learned what it means, this word, freedom. I have seen and I know. No European soldiers could do what they have done. In Europe, it's slaves. Here, it's free men. And so, another toast. I give you the American private soldier, the best fighting man in the whole world. To his victory, to our victory. <laughs> 